As David Urshan once said, I think the best way to tell this story is by starting at the end, briefly, then going back to the beginning, then periodically returning to the end, maybe giving different characters perspectives throughout, just to, you know, give it a bit of dynamism. Otherwise, it's just sort of a linear story. Shortly after the Nexus explodes in Game 5 of the NALCS Finals, a man runs onto the stage, hands raised above his head, cackling maniacally. After a quick embrace with his players, he turns to the crowd and stares down his fellow owners, who are all in attendance. First, he locks eyes with the owner of the team that came in last place, ex-NBA player Rick Fox, who used all the money Kobe Bryant made him to buy an esports franchise before it was cool. Sure, his son who is terrible at the game runs everything behind the scenes, but we all know how much the camera loves this man. Is he beautiful? Yes. Did he manage to mess things up with Eliza Dushku? Yes. Is this forgivable? No. No, it's not. She's an angel. Although it's difficult to hate Rick Fox, perhaps the greatest celebrity ever to grace Jake and Amir's videos, it's easy to laugh in his face for the roster changes they made in the offseason. They tossed their old roster in the dumpster and signed four players who couldn't stick around on good teams. Dardock is an incredibly talented jungler, but he will fight with anyone, including Eliza Dushklu. Although my sources cannot confirm the reports that Phoenix, Altec, and Adrian are genuinely fearing for their lives, the windows on Echo Fox's gaming house are all fogged with the words, help us, visible from the street. There is smoke billowing above the house from a fire in the backyard, where a frenzied Dardock is howling at a picture of Team Liquid's owner, Steve. Oh wait, they got Hoonie? Fifth place. Tenth place, FlyQuest. From the stage, Wesley Edens is difficult to differentiate from any other middle-aged man dragged to the esports finals by their ungrateful teenage son. However, the man who signs Giannis Antetokounmpo's checks also begrudgingly funds the basement-dwelling esports team FlyQuest, a team who hasn't played a meaningful game all season long. After the exodus of Cloud9's original roster was complete, Wesley phoned his Head in the Clowns 80 carry Wild Turtle. Their conversation lasted approximately 9 minutes, explaining how they ended up overpaying Flame, Onda, Fly, and Stun. Is it their fault Wild Turtle has no clue how to play the macro game? No. Ninth place, 100 Thieves. Once Dan Gilbert realized he wasn't going to win another NBA championship courtesy of LeBron James, he bought an esports franchise so he could poorly run two organizations and frustrate an entirely unsuspecting fan base. Head coach Prolly tried to transition his success in Europe with H2K to his new team, but it's difficult to teach old dogs like Afro Moo, Medios, and Ryu new tricks. Someday once again showed he was one of the most talented top laners in the league, and if they didn't need to forfeit three matches because Ryu fell into food comas, they would have made the playoffs. 8th place, Golden Guardians. If you are getting sick of NBA references, you should call your senator and demand they keep NBA owners away from innocent esport franchises. Steph Curry will hit more three-pointers this season than the Golden Guardians will have takedowns throughout the regular season. To be fair, there are many players on their roster who deserve the benefit of the doubt, considering some of the things they had to deal with on their old teams. Lorlo, coming from Team Liquid, performed when he had a jungler who could control the game and help snowball his lane. However, much of Summer 2017 was an unrelenting tank meta where top laners weren't asked to carry games often. Contracts leaving Cloud9 was probably the most surprising free agency move of the offseason. There hasn't been a subsequent leak of information explaining why they let the young talented jungler leave, who has the added value of being from North America and freeing up an import slot. With Lorlo and contracts, Golden Guardians has a young core, accompanied by High, potentially the best shot caller in North America. If Deftly and Matt can resist the temptation to feed in the bot lane, they could legitimately contend for a playoff spot. 7th place, Clutch Gaming. The first non-owner to catch the man on stage's eye is the GM from the Houston Rockets-backed Clutch Gaming. In a candid interview, he admitted he has high aspirations for his team, and thinks they can come in first during the inaugural split, but he also conceded a 6th place finish isn't outside the realm of possibilities. Clutch Gaming and Golden Guardians are clearly the best NBA-backed teams, but the steep learning curve in the NALCS will result in both of them taking a few splits or even years to seriously contend with the experienced franchises. Clutch Gaming acquired Lyra, Apollo, and Hakuho from Envious Gaming, 
all of who performed well, even in their playoff loss to CLG. Only one split removed from a playoff berth, the core of Clutch Gaming received a huge upgrade with the addition of Forbidden. Forbidden is one of the most popular and talented players from Europe, and has exceeded expectations, especially on the international stage. Their new top laner solo will have a difficult time replacing veteran shot caller Seraph, but if Fabivin can take on some of the shot calling responsibilities, Clutch Gaming could surprise their detractors. 6th place, Team Liquid. Once the proud owner of the Forever 4th Curse franchise, Steve rebranded in an attempt to cleanse his team of the stench of losing. Unfortunately, the only thing he cleansed was their ability to win games. After flirting with relegation and nearly missing out on an LCS franchise, Riot mercifully tossed him a spot out of pity. There is no other explanation. The man on stage makes sure to maintain eye contact with Steve for 4 seconds in hopes he would give him 4 million dollars, roughly the amount of money that can be found in Steve's sewage tank. And to think, most of the so-called experts were calling this team a contender before the season started. They were lucky to make the playoffs, and were quickly dispatched in the first round. Most people still seem to love Doublelift, the most overrated player in League of Legends history, but it was really quite easy to see his egotistical tendencies hold back Impact, X Mythy, Pole Belter, and Ollie, who were all extremely happy with the size of their paychecks. Team Liquid apparently needs to have at least one player who is convinced of their supremacy and will rot the team from within. There is a shriek in the crowd and the lights flicker. Dardock appears between Team Liquid and C9. He winks at the man on stage and turns to Steve. He raises his finger to his lips and motions for silence. Fourth place, Cloud9. C9's owner is inexplicably wearing shades. The man on the stage freezes. C9 Jack removes his glasses and tears are streaming down his face. He gives a wink and a big thumbs up. Jack wishes he were as successful as the other OG owners, but has nobody to blame but himself after allowing Impact and Contracts to both leave in the offseason. Impact's championship pedigree and mechanical ability will be difficult to replace, even though he had to split time with Rey throughout last split. Svenskeren is now C9's jungler, which is a drastic departure from contracts. Svenskeren was carried heavily throughout his career on TSM, mostly due to the ability of Bjergsen to shot call and attract all of the attention from the enemy team. Now on his own, Svenskeren will most likely disappoint C9 fans, and cause Jensen to return to his DDoSing ways. At some point over the next two splits, C9 will need to find a long-term solution in the jungle, preferably someone from NA, so they can use Rey in the top lane. Sneaky, Smoothie, and Jensen are a strong core, but the other members of the team will make it difficult to compete with the best teams in North America. 3rd place, Optic Gaming Optic Gaming has approximately 17 owners, and this rattled the man on the stage. To be fair, I wouldn't be able to pick them out of a lineup if they were the only ones included which makes it even more shocking that they were able to put together a team that is easily the best new addition to the North American LCS, and potentially even compete for a championship. Power of Evil is the most underrated mid laner in the world, and carried Misfits throughout Worlds in 2017. His Orianna is truly special, and will require target bans in perpetuity. His shot calling will be bolstered by the notebook himself, Lemonation. Lemon is one of the most intelligent people in the NA LCS and has consistently helped define the meta, particularly in the bot lane. His willingness to try new things continuously produces exciting picks and the results in his team looking like geniuses. Acadian will look to rebound from a tough year on Echo Fox, which was largely not his fault. Now that Lemonation will be shot calling, Acadian should be able to focus on playing aggressive junglers and helping his solo laners make it to the late game, where their ADC Arrow should be able to carry. Arrow is a world class ADC, and as long as his English is steadily improving, he will be in position to show why informed fans were so excited when he came to North America last year. Zig is a respectable top laner and has a solid temperament, but he will not be asked to carry many games. As long as Zig goes even in lane, his team will have a realistic chance to beat every team in the NALCS, except 2nd place, Counter Logic Gaming. The CLG and TSM rivalry is as old as League itself, and both owners are largely responsible for the growth and development of the NALCS. 
Hotshot GG and his disgusting pink hair have come a long way from single-handedly losing his team games. Once he made the transition from player to owner, he has continuously made intelligent decisions and transactions, which have allowed CLG to be relevant each season, even when they weren't in title contention. Although they lost Xmithy and the face of their franchise, Afromu, they still have one of the best coaches in North America in Zix, who should be able to help them learn how to shot call without Afromu. CLG wasn't dependent on a solitary shot caller, which should allow Rainover and Biofrost to blend into the team quickly. Biofrost has the potential to become one of the better supports in North America, and should have more room to make plays now that he has escaped the shadow of Doublelift. The primary reason CLG has been able to remain consistent, even with roster changes, is their deep understanding of the meta, and can only blame their slight mechanical disadvantage for losing to TSM once again. 2018 Spring Split Champions, Team Solo Mid. The man with his hands in the air now clasps onto yet another Summoner's Cup. Andy Reginald Din is easily the best owner in North American esports, and should be thanked for his contributions to the League of Legends community. Year after year, he puts TSM in the position to compete both domestically and internationally, and although they haven't been able to satisfy their fans' unrealistic expectations, they will enter the 2018 season as the undisputed best team in North America. A complete roster overhaul leaves Bjergsen and Haunter as the only remaining members from 2017. Bjergsen is easily the best player in the league, and Haunter has also drawn consideration as one of the best top laners. The best acquisition of the offseason are the signings of Sven and Mithy from G2. G2 has been the best team in Europe for over a year, and although many people attribute that success to perks, the bot lane is where the real strength of the team was generated. Mithy is on the same level as Lemonation in terms of understanding the game, and will be able to take most of the shot calling responsibilities away from Bjergsen and Mike Young which will hopefully allow them to perform even better in lane. The argument could be made that TSM has either the best player or player with the most potential in every role, which is unheard of. The only way TSM fails to lift the cup at the end of the spring split is the inability of Mike Young to live up to the hype and cave under the enormous pressure of the TSM fanbase. After the euphoric explosion of emotions subsides, Reginald turns back to the crowd smiling. The lights flicker twice, quickly, before the arena goes dark. A shocked silence fills the room. Someone is howling. When the lights return, Steve has disappeared. Where, where's, where's Steve? Where has Steve gone? <laughs>